Well, hello everyone. It's Angela with Mystic Moon. Welcome to another reading. So today's topic is the real meaning behind your connection. So I do tend to channel for those that are experiencing a romantic separation or challenge. So keep that in mind, but obviously just take what resonates for you and get rid of anything that doesn't. All the decks I'll be using here today, as well as this beautiful Organite will be listed in the description box down below. So let's go ahead and get started with these messages. We're going to take a look and see what did you and this person come together to learn about in this particular lifetime? Let's look at some of the topics, some of the themes for your soul contract. All right. Why did you and this individual come together? What did you get or want to learn in this situation with one another? All right. Let's look at this. Ooh, we have magic beanstalk. So it says ascension, elevation, and reaching new heights. That's amazing. So you definitely came together, you guys, in order to ascend to new heights, basically, to really elevate your minds, learn, grow. Look at that beanstalk there. It is growing all the way, you know, to the heavens very high. So it's that ascension energy. So that's right off the bat confirming for us that this connection is going to help you to ascend and grow in some way. Oh, anything that is repressed. So we have bottled up, repressed, pent up, and needing to release. So this could be a little bit of a challenging situation where anything that we've been bottling up, anything that we've been perhaps afraid to um, express or just do a certain way, like are we being ourselves, this particular situation might bring this out. And it could kind of come up in the form of like an outburst, right? Where, you know, it's like you're finally free, but then it's like it takes rage or anger anger to get to that point. So this could be the catalyst for this to happen. Anything that we have been bottling up, we might unleash it on this person, but it's like now it's out and now it's breathing. And so we're able to feel it and actually heal it. So this is really a positive actually in the end. We have ice fishing. Wow. This is something really deep. So it says breakthroughs, increase self-awareness. So the whole reason for this, this particular connection is to become more self-aware, aware of the self, um, looking at our, our wounds, taking personal inventory. This is awesome. So I feel like this is a really highly elevated uh, connection because it does take you to new heights. It, it really elevates your, your mind. Elevate my mind. Isn't that a song from the 90s? I don't know why I'm thinking of that. But um, yeah, so you're going to have extreme breakthroughs, maybe even a spiritual awakening uh, because of each other and anything that we've been repressing um, is going to come out in this connection. So like I said, it could be positive, but that it can also be challenging at the same time. It could have been the thing that ended up causing the separation between the two of you because maybe the shadow side came out and we really needed to, you know, do that shadow work and make mistakes in order to experience things and, and heal them. All right, let's see what else. Ooh, okay. This does tell me here that uh, a separation is meant in this particular connection. It says going off grid, unplugging and disappearing for a while. So yeah, I feel like as you guys create your own foundation in life, it may be that you separate yourselves in order to build that, you know, kind of tend to your own home, tend to your own kingdom, figure out who you are, where you belong, what you're doing, etc. So I feel like that's um, your a separation is just imminent in this particular situation. And we have pull shift. Oh, wow. A change of heart, a turnaround or a reversal. Interesting. So I feel like you guys are meant to have a complete turnaround in this situation. So you guys might disconnect only to reconnect at a later date. So I feel like that is also destined of your connection. There will be a pull shift here. Interesting. And we have braving the storm. So I'm not going to lie. It will be uh, challenging. There might be some tears. We might go through dark nights of the soul. We might have to go through that. We might have to bear the shadows alone because it says facing difficulties, finding courage and fortitude. So it's about being brave. It's about being strong, you know, braving the storm. So 
I feel like um, this particular connection, when it either falls apart or you guys go into separation, there could be a lot of pain. There could be a lot of tears, a lot of sadness, feeling like we just lost our best friend, feeling like our whole entire world, like a pull shift, like has been turned upside down. So I feel like this particular connection is meant to make you guys feel at some point in your lives that you've been turned upside down. And it's supposed to happen this way in order to shake you up, to get you to see things in a whole new way. So it's a very significant connection. That's for sure. Very important. Oh, I love this. It is hands that heal. It is for healing purposes. I'm also getting you guys that it leads you to your, your life purpose and your mission. It leads you to your soul's work, what you're supposed to do for a living. People could work with their hands. People could be healers. People could be artists. There's something here where somebody's doing something with their hands, but it doesn't have to be that for everyone. I just feel like obviously the, this, these are the hands, this person's hand in your life helps you to heal your hand in their life life helps them to heal. So you guys are definitely here to help each other and assist in your healing and ascension. Look at that, you guys. That's pretty amazing. Okay. But I feel like there's a connection to while you're in separation or while you feel like your world's been turned upside down, it really points you into the direction of what you're meant to do for your soul purpose and your mission. That's connected to this person and you to them as well. All right, let's see what else. We have wise decision. Okay, I really like this because this basically says the decision to go in a separate direction actually is for both of your highest goods. So try not to spend too much time being in pain over the separation. Realize that there is a higher reason for the separation. Do you see all of these angels? It's like, you know, you've got your spirit team and your spirit guides on the other side and everybody is just, you know, they're in applause because this is exactly what was needed in order for this to basically get like your life lives to be shaken up to the point where you guys would actually change, heal and grow. We have focus on your health. Yes, I love this. It's like focus on yourself. This particular card reminds me of my my um, prior assistant, which she's a family friend still, Victoria. If you guys know, I don't know, she just looks so cute because, you know, uh, Victoria is very much, um, she's like a fitness guru. She's uh, getting licensed, licensed in yoga and she's just so cute and she always looks like this, you know what I mean? In her workout pants and I don't know, so cute. Anyways, um, but this is about nourishing yourself, focus focusing on you because we might meet someone and we feel such magic that we just want to throw ourselves into it. We want to get lost. We want to abandon ourselves because it's so freaking magical, right? But the thing is, when something is that captivating, we are going to lose touch with ourselves. We're not going to focus on ourselves. Instead, we're going to focus on this person. Interesting. 42 and 24. Do you see that mirrored? It's mirrored. Yeah. So this was the best decision in order for you guys to look in the mirror because we may have been looking at this person or pouring all of ourselves into them. Maybe something about them we really want for ourselves, right? So this is a giving us a chance to provide those things for ourselves, to become that thing instead of worshiping this person that has those things. So it might be that we put someone on a pedestal. And the reason that we're doing this is because they have something that we want for ourselves. Well, guess what? You can create that for yourself. So this person inspires you to new heights and you do that for them as well. And we have don't compromise. Yeah, maybe some of you guys were not being assertive enough. You were not um, putting up your boundaries. You were compromising your own needs. You were, you were ready to just maybe give it all to this person and not take anything for yourself. And spirit's saying, we're stopping you from doing that. You shouldn't have to do that. You shouldn't have to compromise your own needs just for, you know, to feel loved or worthy. That's not what love is. And so we're being given an opportunity to kind of really understand what love truly is. And love is not this desperate, um, you know, just I'm going to die for you, even though that's what the movies and the books and everything, that's the kind of love. And it's very exciting and crazy and everything like that. But that's not really what true love is. So we have an opportunity to kind of save ourselves first before we just throw ourselves into a situation and just lose ourselves. Okay. 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you and this person had uh, out of this world chemistry fireworks. Well, guess what? It was supposed to be magical because how were you supposed to connect with this individual otherwise? Look at all those very, you know, erect kinds of energy. So I'm definitely seeing here fireworks, chemistry. It's on, it's on, it's, it's amazing, it's wonderful, but it's very quick, okay? So what I'm trying to say is that you and this individual may have come together and it was like a very quick, like it started off really, really hot, and then eventually, just like that, it may have been over. It's like it was fast, it was quick, you met, bam, this individual just totally impacted you on some just very dynamic level or dy dynamite level, and um, you for them as well. But it was supposed to be quick lived because if it wasn't, you would have probably lost yourself in this person and maybe they would have also lost themselves in you. It was like too hot. It was too hot to be long term in this energy. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the Ten of Wands. Exhaustion. Oh, yeah. It was it was on. <laughs> Just, I'm sorry. It was fire. It's almost like it, there was too much fire and passion for it to thrive and survive. It just couldn't. It became, it, it's almost like it burned itself out. It was so freaking hot. This fire was so hot. It burned itself out. It became too heavy. May also have been that you guys came together and somebody may have wanted a commitment. The other person may not have been ready for that. And so it just like couldn't really survive past all of this, you know, physical stuff. And then we have the high priestess. Interesting. I feel like the two of you guys will remain um, psychically connected, telepathically connected, even though you guys are in separation. So there's something deep here. There's something that's unknown about this connection. You're not meant to know all of the details. Your person doesn't know all the details either. You guys will constantly be in the state of it's a mystery and it's unknown. Now, some of you guys might feel like you do know what the soul connection is. You know what the purpose is. You, you know what you need to do. Um, the other person may not be in touch with that side of themselves yet, but that could be something that is on the horizon. But there's some kind of a spiritual um, undertone here to this connection, but it kind of gets, it kind of gets, um, I can't think of the word I want to use, but it kind of just gets derailed by all of this passion. And I feel like um, obviously what's happened was meant to be, but I feel like it was just too hot to hold on too long term, but there's something deeper and there's something about studying and learning, maybe even getting in touch with your um, spiritual side. So in a spiritual connection, your connection with the divine, your connection with your higher self, some sort of illumination, some sort of um, just deeper understanding. There's like this very spiritual, like I said, undertone to your connection. There's something deeper here. It's hidden. It's a mystery. And it's kind of like a rabbit hole that we're meant to dive into and kind of figure out. So yeah, that's very, very cool. All right, you guys. So now we're going to take a look and see what is the biggest impact that you guys have made on each other's healing and ascension and journey. So let's look at this. Let's see. What do we have? Let's go ahead and get the mutual topic here. This is my Divine Love Inspiration Counterpart Messages deck. Oh my God, what did I just say? This is nuts. <laughs> I love it when spirit does this. Okay, yeah. There is something here about... Um, going deeper and studying. So it says, learn something new for the both of us. So both of you guys are supposed to learn something, obviously from this connection, but you're supposed to go deeper. You're not just learning something from this person. So try not to keep it surface level there. Really look at this as this individual, as well as them for you is it pushes you to go deeper into yourself, deeper than you ever gone before. So it's quite profound. There's a spiritual awakening that is connected to each other. And there's some deep hidden mysteries within yourself that are inspired from each other, if that makes sense. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and get the masculine side. So the masculine in this situation what is the biggest impact that this connection has had on this masculine so far? This is my divine masculine tarot. Ooh, ooh, that is deep. That's judgment. That's Pluto. That's death and transformation. That's karma, man. That's something because the judgment is about going back and taking responsibility for the way that you acted in the past. And if you acted in a shadowy way, this is giving you an opportunity to resurrect. Damn. 
So that's pretty profound, you guys, that your um, counterpart, and I'm assuming that the masculine is your person because most feminines watch my videos here. But yeah, this is what this brings out in your person. So the biggest impact that you've made on your person's life is that you've caused them to really look at their behavior from the past. Now, this could be the past all the way to their childhood, or it could be maybe past actions that they took in your connection. So there could be something that they're wanting to fix. There's some judgment call that they made that they don't feel good about, that they want to take responsibility for eventually, okay? Let's go ahead and get the biggest impact that they've made on you. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is crazy. The high priestess. So you are the high priestess in the reading, okay? Yeah, so you come into the contract like, I feel like you already know who this person is. And yes, there's still mysteries and things that you're going to learn along the way. You don't know everything, um, but you're pretty in tune with it, okay? Because you're coming through as the high priestess. This particular individual triggers this psychic gift or perhaps just your the whole reason for your existence and what you're doing here really opens up your mind quite profoundly. So we have two major arcana. So I, of course, immediately we're getting major, major impact here. The high priestess is connected to the moon. So we have the moon and we have Pluto. Ooh, so yeah. Um, but I feel like there's a psychic connection between the two of you because it says, can you hear me too? You can hear your person. You you hear their uh, you hear their thoughts. You, you're getting some telepathic messages from this person. You might get signs from spirit, spiritual downloads, have dreams, just hear things, um, hear things through music, lyrics, things like that. But you are hearing your person and you are kind of asking that question, D is this a two-way street? Do you hear me too? Yeah. So that, that is pretty major. So let's go ahead and get um, a couple of other cards just to see how else you've impacted them. Okay, shutting you out. So how you've impacted this person is that they feel like they need to shut you out for a little bit of time. And that's probably related to this card here. They had to make this decision to go off grid, unplug from you, disappear from your life for a while. And of course, you're taking this naturally as feeling very shut out and left out in the cold with the five of pentacles. But this person needs to go dark. This person needs to go off the grid. This person needs to pull away from you. But it's funny because you guys are still psychically connected. So it's it's like they, they didn't really go anywhere. Physically, yes, but spiritually and energetically, no, they haven't really gone anywhere. Okay. So let's go ahead and see what impact ooh, they've had on you. So <laughs> I'll grab the card that fell out. We have the page of swords checking up on you. <laughs> this is funny to me. Um, it's not like you guys are spying on this person, even though maybe I'm calling somebody out. Maybe you are, but I feel like you don't even have to in the physical world because you already know just psychically because you're extremely psychic, um, what's going on with this person. So, uh, yeah, it's like you're psychically checking up on them. You may not be connected to their every thought or anything like that. Like not, it's not invasive. Um, but you, you know what you need to know at the right time. Um, you don't even necessarily need to check on up on them, which, but I do feel like maybe some of you guys do <laughs> while you're in separation. So the biggest impact though, that this person has on you is the way that you think. Okay. The way that you think. So the page of swords is extremely analytical, uses a lot of rational thinking and is very practical with their uh, thinking. The high priestess is somebody who is purely connected to um, her feminine um, emotions as well as her intuition. So I feel like this person, what they do for you is they um, trigger you to balance out these, basically balance out your skills, knowing when to trust your gut, knowing when something's accurate and knowing when something is just purely emotional. So they really help to fine tune your psychic skills in this lifetime. Dang. All right. Let's see what else. How else do you impact this person in a big way? Let's get one more. We have the two of wands. Ooh, we're on the same page. 
So the fact that you have this question, can you hear me too? Well, we're on the same page. So I almost feel like we're actually getting an answer to that question that your person feels your energy. They feel the flame. They feel your fire. They feel still very attracted to you. They're still very much in that eight of wands. Now it might've gotten too intense for them. So they stepped away, they went dark, but even though that they're off the grid, they're still connected to your energy. So I don't know, you guys might psychically have some kind of a little situation going on where you're feeling their desire and flames for you too. So I do feel like the biggest way that you've impacted this person is that they still feel connected to you as well. All right, let's get the last one for them or for you. So how does this person impact you? Ooh, we have getting out and having fun. I love this for you. You're not sitting around waiting for this person, putting all your eggs into their basket, putting your life on hold. No, you're still making sure that you're making the best of your life. You might have gotten involved in other relationships. You might just be casually having fun, spending time with friends and family, building a community, just basically having a good time. And this is very, very important because this creates a higher vibration. It also gets rid of any lower vibration heavy energy where we're trying to control the situation or we're severely attached to it where we can't let go and be happy. So I feel like this invokes in you a very positive response and you also do the same for them as too. So it's like the lighter your energy is, the more inviting it is for this person to eventually return. So that's what we have so far. So if you guys are resonating with this particular contract, I'm going to go into the extended version. This is what we're going to look at over there. What lingering shadows or karmic cycles still need to play out for individual growth? Also, what is your person's current point of view about you and your connection? As well as what is the next phase for this soul contract? So if that sounds interesting to you guys, please join me over there on the extended. I'll put that link down below. And thank you guys so much for choosing to watch this reading today. You guys take care. Bye-bye.